Hello ladies and gentlemen, Professor Bright here, and we are still headed back to London. This time we will... I was gonna say we probably won't be making many detours, but I can't promise that because there might be interesting stuff on the westerly trip to London. Like the Sea of Lilies, which means we can get rid of this evil, well not really evil, just gross... Cook, hello. The crawling stars, the lookout shouts. Far above, the false stars in the cavern roof are shifting, a rare and ominous event. What now? Hmm. 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 We'll go with, uh, record the change and assign a name. If the new shape... If the new shape seems well-omened, your crew may be cheered. Who knows? They weren't cheered at all. A darkness. Three of the false stars wink out altogether, as suddenly as closed eyes. The pattern that remains is as hopeless and meaningless as cast dice. Somewhere, a sailor begins to sob. They're very, very, very uh, attached to those stars. Not stars. The false stars, which... Oh, I used to know what they came from. Hmm. All right, we only have three barrels of fuel and one supply. Ooh, this is a bad idea. This right here, this is a bad idea. Some distance to the east. <sighs> Maybe there'll be a shop. Discovered the Sea of Lilies. We watch for fungal pads in the Sea of Lilies. There's a prison here, guarded by not oracles. And a port. Come on. So maybe we don't head back to uh, London anytime soon. Uh, I mean, if it weren't for the fuel and supply situation, we would stay out here for a lot longer. But, for the moment, Nup Mid Harbor. Yes. Oh, that's a lovely looking frog. The prison walls are. Oh, the prison's called Wisdom. Mm. The prison walls are mercilessly steep. Nup Mid built this place as a prison for the Khanate. Now it answers only to its governor, and its governor answers to no one. I am going to let the Shady Cook go ashore just because I really do not know. No. Let the Shady Cook go ashore. Vorakuva Prison, he says dangerously. Let me just throw. What? Uh, yeah. Go. A warm. Oh, wow. This is quite the reward. That was totally worth it. All right. A warm welcome. Oh, yes, the unctuous fellow assures you. We value enthusiasm, enthusiasm over formal qualifications. The not oracles are always hungry, but they're also delicate in their tastes. Their meals must be prepared assiduously. I understand this fellow is indentured to you. Well, we have collected tremendous stores of knowledge from the oracles. Tremendous. Let me give you some of my notes. And we will, of course, replenish your stores. Thank you so much. The cook darts eagerly into the prison as soon as the doors are opened. Doesn't even say goodbye. And now we have quite a few things. Plus supplies and fuel, which we kind of needed to not die. I'm pretty okay with this. Hmm. Oh, I need way more pages than I have for this one. Exchanging secrets for prisoners. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> we could try to rescue one. Hmm. Well, we'll compile our port report. Watch the comings and goings. Not so many goings. 
Ships from the Khanate are our most common, but you see shelenite vessels, polythreme triremes, with chained and sulky unfinished men, corsairs disposing of their miscreants, even one furtive Iremi skiff. The wardens pay them well for their prisoners. But why? I'm not seeing any real hints. Hmm. Well, do they buy? They don't buy. Hmm. Oh well. I'm curious. Because they seem to indicate that there's some kind of... Well, there's a creature called Not Oracle that they derive knowledge from. Also, these things, like, absorb light? Because... That wasn't so bright last time, before I shined my light on it. Hmm. Hmm, I say. Huh. That's kind of neat. Now, I'm pretty sure it said Visage was to the south. Southwest. Alright, so we'll be going technically closer to London. Hmm. <laughs> oh, you visage? Yep, you are. I recognize that face anywhere. Hmm. <laughs> I think this actually might be the furthest east we've ever gone. Let me check the map in a minute. Well, let's attempt to check the map. Come on. Nope. Bad. No. Yeah, we are actually pretty close to the eastern edge of the map. It's a terrible idea, but we could try to go past the eastern edge. It works so well when we tried that with the south and the north. I mean, really. What's the worst that could happen? But first... Let's visit Visage. Hide your face. Hide all your faces. This is the port of Visage, where faces may not be naked. Except one, a stone monument the size of a fishing... of a village church, serenely gazing upwards, flourishing of years. Not sure where I got fishing from that. First, we will create our port report. You can at least interview those who are leaving. That'll have to do. A departing merchant gives you a confused account of crocodiles and honeycakes and something about ear blockage? To this, you add your own impressions about the street layout close to port and the types of commerce here. When the lights are especially bright, it is possible to make out the details of the profile of that great stone face. Inward and upward. We're going to be here for a little while. There are terms. All those who enter must play their parts. The sun is visible only after you've crossed the threshold. Ashore in Visage. On the lower slopes, stone buildings, flat roofs, archways. In the architecture, there lingers a memory of lotus and palm frond. The hill above is a face, forever looking up at the ceiling of the Untersee. No one inhabits its cheeks or the hollows of its eyes. So this is kind of like a, um... Judging by lotus and palm frond, I would say this is an Egyptian-themed kind of area. Just see if you look at those, well, the top of the buildings. I was going to say look at those buildings, but we only get a top view of them. And the staring face. Eh, it kind of looks like what you would expect from ancient Egypt. Hmm. Hmm. Well. We'll check in at the, cost yeah, at the customs house. One may not wander visage at will. There's a changing room. All visitors must pass, one by one, through a room guarded by a person in the mask of a moon moth. So... Why am I doing this? Ask the significance of the masks. Maybe there's more to it than a question of aesthetic taste. Assorted pestilences. Delightful. Moon Moth explains, each mask declares a different intention towards the denizens of Visage and must be accompanied by suitable behavior. 
The frog is for visitors who, though perhaps clumsy and unfamiliar with local etiquette, have come in order to observe local ways and to make uncouth comments about them. The locust is for those who seek profit in visage and would carry away as many goods as possible. You prompt about the bat. Moonmoth hesitates. Bat is an ill-omened visitor, sent as a messenger or a spy. Bat always dies. Well, we're intent on making money this time, so the locust. It looks voracious. Let's see here. Hunger for all things. Moonmoth settles the locust mask over your head. The eye holes are covered with a thin gold film through which valuable objects gleam more brightly. May you find a happy harvest, says Moonmoth. Then, when you have partly turned away, it double knots the ties on its purse as though you're likely to pick its pockets. Doesn't it know you can see it? And your mask quality is now three, locust mask. And we don't have any expertise in parts, because this is our first time. So you know. Hmm. Well, you could always go for a library. Visit the Library of Parts, so-called because all the books are fragmentary, perhaps. Stupid lintel, enter the dark. A room of heavy stone guarded by a golden statuette of a woman with outstretched arms. The scroll niches, sorted to correspond to a variety of masks, the jackal and the lioness, the crocodile and dung beetle. A woman in the mask of a lotus blossom is standing at a lectern, reading in silence. Hmm... Unfortunately, we don't have very good mirrors or veils. So, what's the purpose of this room? What sort of parts are they, anyway? Filed under M for masked. Moonmoth explains. People think it means something like Library of Fragments, but this is wrong. The parts in question are like parts in a play. This is where the denizens of Visage come in order to learn how to perform their masks more accurately more completely, with a truer spirit. Hmm. Interesting. So basically, the way their society works is you put on this mask, and that determines how you behave. Huh. Or how you're supposed to behave, anyway. I wonder... Hmm. I wonder if we might have a chance to do something unlike our masks, and what the consequences for that would be. Um, oh, I suppose I could try reading over the mask. Or reading over Lotus Blossom's shoulder. What is that she's studying? Oh, bud form. She appears to be reading poetry, but you catch no more than a few references to petals before she sees that you're lurking. Her body folds in on itself, flower returning to bud form. The moon moth does not like you doing this, does not like it, and accuses you of being a bat in disguise, and casts you out. Oh. So that's the consequence for doing something that isn't like your mask. Okay, fair enough. Well, we've been kicked out of Visage. Huh. Oh well. We will return here at some point. In the meantime, unless there's something interesting on the horizon... Isle of Cats could be interesting. Although, what is that little thing? Looks very rocky and glowy. Which might mean it's valuable. Brock's Reef. Mm. Port Cecil, a long way to the west. Well, the Isle of Cats can wait. There's a port, which presumably has traders. And, well, that music is very discomforting. I know it says to the southwest, but I'm curious about this thing. Dow's Ait? It says I discovered Dow's Ait. Ait? But I don't see. Oh, hey. Hey, buddy. No, no, you don't see nothing. You don't see nothing. I thought 
thought we didn't have a pneumatic rat cinder. Okay. Burning a little bit extra fuel to get out of there. Oh, you must be Port Cecil. Hi. Port Cecil. A sourceless silver glow. A haven for players of games. Port Cecil. Rumpled convolutions of coral fill the water, glimmering with silvery light. The harder you look, the more you see shapes amidst the chaos. Almost as if they were sculpted. This one could be a crenellated castle, that one a horse's head. A neat little port huddles into the side of a coral island. Prosaic imperial docks and houses tucked away in a baroque organic chaos. In that curious silvery light among the frozen chaos of coral, this scene has the unreal air of a pencil sketch, crumpled and discarded. Ah, so this is the principles of coral. You can see chess is popular in the principles. The port is full of exiles, drunks, and washed-up Z traders. They all play, often obsessively. Be careful, the chess pieces are carved from skintelec. Here in the principles, that can be very dangerous. Well. Hmm. We must gather our intelligence. What happens here? Chess dreams in silver light. The older inhabitants of Port Cecil carry coral incrustations like a disease, splotched with silvery light. They like to go up on. They like to go up into the limestone heights behind the harbor to lay their heads against the pillars and towers, stare at the roof of the Neath, dream open-eyed. Sometimes they speak of things far away: the Conate's work, the Smuggler Wars, the Fathom King's secrets. Perhaps it's not all invented. Well, that's intriguing. Is there some kind of link between these principles of coral and the stalagmites on the ceiling? Oh, or maybe the false stars... Hmm. Maybe there's a link between them and the false stars up above through this coral. Hmm. Well, regardless... Hmm, we could try to gather skintlac. Again, need more mirrors to realistically do it well. But, hmm. Hmm. Sure. Gather skintlac. The best of the coral will fetch a high price in London. But walk the reefs of the principles, and you risk delusion and despair. Take your crew, and go carefully. Polypoid Whispers. It's against local law and custom to break coral from the reef, and you've seen the scars of those who tried. The acid burns, the blind silver eyes, so you're looking for loose fragments. Today the Z is calm, and you find a few good candidates. They lie shining softly like droplets of moon, but after a while you become concerned that they're eyes, that each is watching you. When you close your fist around one, it examines your blood with amused delight. When you put them together in your pocket, they clatter and gossip together. Of course, you think. They broke from the shining mind. They have its vitality, but not its weariness or experience. You will have to lock them in, separate, in a separate box, lest they peep at you when you're bathing and see who you are. The thought of their sight on your skin fills you with horror. What if your skin turned clear? What if they saw your bones? You come back to yourself when you see one of your sailors fall on his back and start kicking delightedly in the air like a beetle. Gravity, he cries. I've fallen. Okay. You hasten back to the ship with your hall of coral before it can do any further damage. Uh-huh. Okay. So there's some more implications. So, maybe not a link to the... I suppose you'd call it the roof of the cave. But some kind of hive mind thing. Hmm. Uh. Well, chess. Chess is popular in the principles. The port is full of exiles, drunks, and washed-up Z traders. They all play, often obsessively. Be careful. Oh, I read this already. Yeah, I did. I just didn't go through the option. But be careful. The chess pieces are carved from skintelac. Here in the principles, that can be very dangerous. Of course. Just one more game. You don't know how long you've been playing. You want to match another. The rough coral tips of the chess pieces are smeared with blood. Yours, your opponent's. But you've begun to realize that your moves recapitulate the movements of the powers of the Neath, the flukes and their shapelings, the bazaar that lurks in London, 
mountain nomad that, pro that prowls the sea. Salt, stone, storm. With every move you take, the shape of it becomes clearer in your mind. Sharper. Checkmate, you say. One more game? Your first officer is tugging at your arm. Ignore them. You have chess to play. Win enough games, then something else will occur. Hmm. We can go again. Just a very modest challenge. That's all. Well, that... Okay, it's just because I converted my fragments over to a secret. Okay. I was going to say, that, um... That sound was not entirely pleasant. A disciplined success. Odd thoughts bubble up each time you touch a chess piece. This one longs for home. That one has a secret desire for revenge against the slayer of its rank, rank mate. This will be a queen one day. Those would do better as metal. You taste the metal. You ignore these thoughts and move methodically to a victory over your opponent. He blinks. Checkmate? He asks helplessly. Win enough games and something else. Hmm. Oh, a tough challenge. Well. And they don't buy anything. You are the worst port ever. I'm leaving. I'm gonna go back to Guider's Morn where they actually buy things. Poor Cecil. Humph. <laughs> they mean there are no islands in range. Just a little while ago, I saw that Guider's Morn was to the west. What that? Okay. Discovered Errant's Gyrus. Which is a part of the brain. Oh my! So this. All these principles of quarrel, that's all, like, part of a hive mind. At least I assume, because gyrus, lobe, these are terms that describe parts of the brain. And you can't see how I'm pointing with the mouse cursor, but... Oh, my. And they're right next to Garda's Morn. Really? Okay. I'm okay with that. Hmm. Corsair's Forest West. Step carefully. The Morn is a stalagmite vast as a crag, and its foot has no safe harbors. The Corsair's Citadel nestles halfway up. An intricate system of winches takes the strain, and your ship rises slowly from the Z. Her hull creaks in protest. Grizzled sailors groan and cling to stanchions. Higher. Higher. Now the Z shimmers like glass below. Children clambering in crevices cheer and wave alarmingly. The winch motor slows, and you hang in a cradle next to a red-bowed pirate cutter. Of course, we must... Ooh. Well, we must gather intelligence. Garter's Morn swarms with pirates, smugglers, and captains of uncertain allegiance. You could learn a lot here, but you'll need to go carefully. We did not go carefully. They have a dislike of spies. You and one of your more villainous-looking sailors join a dice game. Villainous looking, but you know for a fact that she tithes to charity and has a delightful singing voice. The topic turns promisingly to pillage and ambush, but your sailor is a little too forward with her questions. There's a scuffle and a stabbing. You escape. She does not. Uh, tragic, but we got our port report anyway. Let's explore the Morn. There's a surprising amount of actual landscape on the Morn. It's vertical, admittedly, but once you find the beast paths and urchin roads, you can traverse it as you would a rocky moor, with an additional throat full of lurching terror. Ah, a patriotic dispute. A crew of Chelinate hunters exchange heated insults with a Khanate privateer. It looks likely to end in blood. Hmm. I'm going to side with the Chelonians, even though I have never found their island. Although this raising our own flag, kind of tempting. The Chilonians are savage ghouls who live in a dead turtle. The Kaganians are decadent cowards who can't hold a kingdom together. London is the sole bright of civilization in the Neath. Perhaps you should point these things out. Or perhaps not. We'll side with the Chilonians. They may be uncouth, but at least they're brave. And victory! With battle screams and razor-tipped harpoons, and your help, the Chilonians rout the Kyvet, the Khanate privateers. The swaggering huntress who leads them, Claps you on the back. 
Well fought for a Londoner. Come to the carrion sea sometime, we'll roast a sea serpent for you. She drops a saw-edged bone token into your hand and blows you a kiss. Ah, oh my. We won't do another afternoon at the Errant Limpet, but we will go to the shops because they're willing to buy honey for a much better price than London will. And we'll sell off our mushroom wine as well. Oh, the friendly face. Hmm. Ah, and these actually have descriptions. The Errant Limpet, always eager for wine and honey. Their supply prices are calibrated for Corsairs. And of course you can sell your illicit goods at the friendly face. And of course you can't expect to get a fair price. Oh. Lovely.